ordering and accounting for inventory. Now, we've already discussed the process of costing inventory. In this episode, we will be discussing the processes that lead to inventory being received and possibly issued. We'll start with ordering of goods, purchase requisition form. Now, when a department requires new material to use, they will first send a purchase requisition form to the purchasing department. The purchasing department will now send a purchase order form, usually termed as a PO, to the relevant supplier, authorizing them to deliver. Normally, before the PO is issued, the purchasing department would have done its check to be sure that those goods are available at reasonable prices to them. Now, copies of the PO is to be sent to the accounting and stores department. We move on to receiving inventory from the supplier. When the supplier delivers the goods, they will prepare a delivery note to accompany the inventory detailing what has been delivered. When the inventory receiving department or the stores department takes custody of the goods, they will prepare a goods received note. Now, this is issued after cross-checking the delivered goods against the purchase order and against the delivery notes. The purpose of the cross-check is to ensure supply is as exact as the audit. Copies of this document is to be sent to the purchasing and accounting department. The goods receiving department will update the records to reflect the delivered inventory. Invoice. This document details the cost of the delivered goods and the amount due to be paid to the supplier. The supplier will present this document usually to the purchasing department. The purchasing department have to match the invoice details to the PO and the goods received notes and approve it for payment. The approved invoice will be sent to the accounting department who will record it in their books and later effect payment. Issuing inventory. Now, when the material department is in need of materials, they will send a material requisition note to the stores. The stores will issue the requested material and update their records. Now, in event there are any unused material, the production department will prepare a material return note and together with the unused goods, return them to the stores. The stores department will update the records accordingly. Also, when one production department wants to transfer to another, a material transfer note is to be prepared detailing the quantity and the type of inventory. When a customer orders for finished goods and are to be dispatched to them, a goods dispatch note is created to accompany the goods. Upon delivery, a delivery note is prepared and issued to the customer. The customer is to match this document to the appeal and then issue a goods receipt note. Valuation of inventory. Businesses produce and or purchase inventories severally throughout a period. It is likely for their cost to differ, either increasing or otherwise. If the inventory are voluminous and identical, it will be nearly impossible to determine the batch of goods remaining at the end of the reporting period to record as closing inventory. Now, there are three methods a business's management may adopt and use to record a realistic cost. These are the first in first out also known as the fifo the last in first out also known as the lifo and the weighted average cost we'll take the first in first out with this method management assume that inventory is used or issued out in the order secured or manufactured so the first inventory bought is the first sold out and as a result the closing inventory will consist of the most recent receipt of inventories and will be valued at their cost. Let's test our understanding. So AJ Incorporated had the following material transactions during February 2017. So we have the dates, the quantity, the cost per unit. So on 1st February, they had an opening quantity of 50 with a cost of units of $5. On 6th February, they received material, a quantity of 150 going for five dollars five cents on 15 february there was an issue of 120 units on 18 february they received 200 units of goods 
with a cost of $5.8. And then on 27th February, they issued 180 units. So we have to calculate the value of closing inventory at February ending using the first in first out method. So for solution, we will start with the opening. So quantity of 50 with a cost per unit of $5 will give a total cost of $250. Then on 6th February, they received 150 units at a cost of $5.5, also giving a total of $825. The balance at 6th February will be 200 units. Then on 15th February, there was an issue of 120 units. Now here, we would have to issue the first one, which was the opening balance, at its cost, giving $250. There will be a balance of 70 then we issue it from that coming in on 6 february the 150 at its cost 5.5 giving 385 the balance on this date will be 80 units left valued at the latest cost of 5.5 giving 440 dollars now on 18th february there was a receipt of 200 dollars at 5.8 dollars total cost leading to 1160 dollars the balance as of this date will be 280 units. Then on 27th February, there was an issue of 180 units. Now, there was an already existing balance of 80 at a cost of $5.5. That will go out first. Then the balance of 100 will now be issued out of the latest receipt of 200 at its cost of 5.8. Also leading to a total cost of $580. So at the closing of February, there will be a closing balance of 100 at a cost of the latest inventory being 5.8. So the value will be $580, which will be sent to the current asset column of the statement of financial position. Next method is the last in first out. This is the opposite of the FIFO method. So this method assumes that inventory are issued out in the reverse order, meaning the last bought or manufactured is the first to be sold or issued out at the earliest request. Therefore, any remaining inventory at the period end will be those earliest received and will therefore be valued at their cost. Let's test understanding. The same example as earlier, AJ Incorporated having these balances. But now we are supposed to find the closing inventory using the last in first out. So with the solution, the opening inventory of 50 units with a cost per unit of $5 leading to $250. The receipt on 6th February of 150 at a cost per unit of $5.5 with a total cost of $825. The balance is still 200 units. On 15 February, the issue of 120. In the previous example, we exhausted the opening balance before coming to the 6th February receipt. But in this example, we are going to first exhaust the latest stock, the 150 units. It's more than the issue now. So we'll take the totality of it at its cost of 5.5. So the total cost is $660. The balance will be 80. Opening balance of 50 at $5. And the balance on the receipt of 30 at $5.5. Okay, leading to a total cost of $165. Then on 18th February, there was a receipt of 200 units at $5.8, a total cost of $1,160. The balance as of this date will be 280 units. Now on 27th February, there was an issue of 180 units. So again, we will exhaust the latest stock, which is the 200 at its cost before we move up if there's any balance. There will be no balance, so we take the entire issue and value it at the latest cost of $5.8, which is $1,044. The balance as of this date will be 100 units. Value of the earliest cost, 50 units at $5, leading to $250. 30 units at $5.5, which is the second earliest, leading to $165. Then the balance after charging the issue against the latest stock of 20 at its cost of 5.8 leading to $116. So the total closing inventory of 100 units will be valued at 531, which is different from the 5 
eighty dollars seen using the FIFO method. The last method is the weighted average cost. With this, the average of the various cost of inventories at the period end will be sorted and used. This method calculates the average cost after each issue of material. Let's test understanding to make the journey clearer. The same scenario or question seen in the two methods. AJ Incorporated having various inflows and outflow of stocks at various dates within February. But now we are supposed to calculate the value of closing inventory at February ending using the weighted average cost. So with the solution, the opening inventory of 50 at a cost per unit of $5 leading to $250. The receipt on set February at 150 at a cost per unit of $5.5 leading to total cost of $825. The balance on this date is 200 units. The total cost balance is $1,075. So the cost per unit will now be the total cost divided by the total quantity as of 6 February, which will give us 5.38. Now the issue on 15 February of 120 will have a cost of this average cost. So the total cost will be $645. The balance of the 80 will also be charged at the average cost, which will give a total of $430.40. The receipt on 18 February for 200 units at a cost of $5.8, leading to a total cost of $1,160. The balance also on this date will be 280. We find the total cost, which is the $430.4 plus $1,160, which will lead to total cost of $1,590.4, giving an average cost per unit of 5.68, that is the division of the total cost and the quantity. The issue on 27th February of 180 units came at a cost of 5.68, that is the average cost as of that period. So it came with a total of $1,022.4. The closing balance as of the end of February of 100, same with the other two methods, but with a cost per unit of 5.68, leading to the total cost of $568. So you see, the closing inventory with these three methods are different. Unfortunately, the LIFO method has been ruled out as non acceptable in practicing management accounting, but for examination purposes, you have to learn it and apply. This is where we draw down the curtain on this episode discussion. Thank you very much for watching and God bless you.